Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip. Good news, health-focused foodies. Introducing Diet Haggis. It's mostly water. This facility must have been huge when you compare it to the size of the spaceship. You use that ship as part of a rescue mission to save various members of the research team lost during a mission gone wrong. Deep beneath this alien world, it's filled with peril, water, lava, ice and critters. Okay, sure, some of those are more dangerous than others, but you have to survive them while finding the scientists and tugging them back with your trusty claw. But just be careful not to accidentally kill any of them. While this Pixel Junk game has more story than the one I reviewed in the previous episode, it is a severely functional one. It starts with exposition about how the expedition was a result of resource strain and corporations competing against each other. I mean, when you consider how small a focus is placed on storytelling in this game, that justification seems a little superfluous, really. I believe it isn't mentioned again. Sure, some of the scientists say stuff when you save them, but it doesn't really tie into that old intro and backstory. It's more mildly mysterious and foreshadowy things. A more direct version of picking up a deceased character's audio logs. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it helps you focus on something other than the action. And that's good, because this is a gameplay-focused game. It's the main thing. It's almost arcadey. It's a twin-stick shooter with unique mechanics. Impacts don't damage your ship, and arguably your most dangerous enemy is heat. Get too close to lava, you overheat. And when an enemy attack hits you, heat builds up as well. You have no health bar. When the heat gets too much, game over. Time cools you down, and water quenches you. <sighs> and magma offs you immediately. The fluid dynamics are quite nice, and how they behave and interact with one another is a main part of the gameplay. Water turns magma to rock, and it also produces gas when it comes into contact with this black fluid, and magma can ignite the gas. Cyclical. Some of these reactions can be quite dangerous. Fortunately, I got a power-up before I plunged headfirst into magma. Making sure these reactions don't kill the scientists is job number one. And job number two is using these reactions to solve mild physics-based puzzles, or even use the fluid as weaponry. There's a big pro already. How many games have a magma gun? Using it to carve away ice feels brilliant. That and the way you blow away soft rock is positively Wormsian. And the game also has an exploration component. You can collect diamonds and find secrets. And there are a couple of bosses too. The boss fights are quite unique and inventive. Especially the final boss, it, they still fit thematically. If the final boss, as well as this one, don't necessarily fit with the other standard enemies, they're a touch more recognizable. The standard enemy design isn't bad though, it's pretty good, it's just I don't know what they are. Okay, this is a Repello Bat, that's the Tri-Eye, and my personal favorite, the ever so annoying Spider Cage. Spider Cage, Spider Cage, its mandibles will make you rage. Because there's one of the scientists in its jaws. Visually it's pretty good as well. Sometimes it can come across as a bit plain, but there are some nice flourishes in the back and foreground. And the fluids themselves are quite beautiful, seeing them slosh about, seeing the shine of the ice and the glow of the magma. Which is probably for the best, because focusing on and dodging them leaves very little time to appreciate the scenery in these high-pressure situations. You know, when you're dodging volcanic eruptions, the scientists and the secrets are not the only things that contribute to the whole feeling of mystery. The music helps as well. If the tracks are a bit thematically strange... What is this, a 70s cop show? Wait, 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 what? This is a very arcadey sci-fi game. Why are you talking about the JFK assassination? And beyond the bonkers nature of that lyric in the general sense, that was quite a bit funkier than I would have expected from this particular piece of sci-fi. And it does alternate between mystery and action, it seems. 
So enemies to dodge and fight, a nice atmosphere, very easy puzzles to complete, a nice pleasant gaming experience. But the game lacks distraction. Apart from the diamonds and secrets really. And thus the game can be a bit of a grind. Complete this level, go on to the next. But don't worry, this game isn't particularly difficult. In this case that may be more of an asset than a liability. And it isn't that long, so it doesn't outstay its welcome. It took me 7 hours to complete it and it was a worthwhile gaming memory. The game. The game is cheap on Steam. 97 Rand full price, 9 Rand 70 on sale. That's 1 Rand 39 per hour of gameplay which is quite splendid. And it does have a very small, reasonable download size, as it only takes up 270 megabytes on the hard drive. Plus, it works on the War Horse without incident. And it has same screen co-op. And it's controller flexible. I tried a higher end Xbox type controller, as well as less official types of the controller. Back when I originally reviewed this game, I was unsure how that would look. Putting the two ships in these narrow corridors together. But I tested it recently with a friend and it played fairly well. Surprisingly fun. A lot of coordination to avoid lava, etc. Stereotypically, I suppose it is kid-friendly. I mean, there are times when scientists die, and the maw of a space bug, for example, bloodlessly, mind you. But when they die, they do show a text bubble of them screaming in agony and terror. Or is Arg more of a grunt? But ultimately, I maintain, kid-friendly. The game has unique mechanics that work well, especially those that involve fluids. The visuals are good if they do look a bit plain. As though surely they could have fit in a bit more detail. The game has a nice atmosphere too. Mysterious when you find a secret. Sometimes mysterious due to the music. You delve in the depths of this planet. The music is good too. If thematically strange. Funky and you can dance to it. Too bad you're in a spaceship. The levels are well thought out. Balancing reasonable puzzles, combat and exploration. They utilize the game's mechanics well. But the gameplay does drag on a bit after a while. It is rather arcadey. So much tunnel. The bosses are well designed too. And also use the mechanics well. But spoiler, there are only three of them. But each one of them focuses on a different aspect of the mechanics. So very unique from one another. Not repetitive in the slightest. On the maybe side, the story is quite functional. Almost as though it's purely there to prevent the lack of narrative. But when the scientists talk in their foreshadowy way, it can add some eeriness, but not much else. And on the con side, while the gameplay can be well-rounded, it is well-rounded in a very narrow focus. You mainly do the same things from level to level, with only the puzzles being different. And even in those cases, sometimes there's enough familiarity there that this game can get a bit boring after extended periods of time. Which is problematic when you consider just how gameplay focused this game is. And it has no distractions to speak of. The gameplay is the meat. All in all, this game is very worthy. Come on, play it. It's pretty fun to make slushies. Just don't freeze yourself in the process and die. Set to one of the more mysterious tracks that does not care for your peril. Choip, 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 choip.